high, high, high. Okay, these, if you've already looked on Blackboard, you've discovered that these are on Blackboard. The notes are always on Blackboard. The lecture notes I'm using today are on Blackboard. And um, if you always check on Blackboard, then you'll never get surprised and all the fun of the class will go out. Okay? What a bummer. Anyway, I wanted to try something. I really, really did. We'll see if it works given how slow our internet is. Some other times it's really fast. There. Okay, we're going to see if this will play. watching at home, I guess, if you use what? Google Chrome. Anyway, this just shows you how to set up the problem. Week two is story problems. Yay! We love story problems. Okay, enough. Even the poor lady in the video doesn't like story problems. That was a wonderful lesson. Thank you. Okay, now. Before we do something more complicated like this, why don't we start with the basics of story problems and the strategies for solving them and what are some understandings, and then you're going to get to go to the board and practice, which is the whole reason that eventually you'll get yourself into five relatively equal groups.
there. Yeah, I can tell. Okay, everything is going to be just a little bit harder today than it ought to be. Not a whole lot, but a little harder than it ought to be. Okay, there are some key words. that you want to be aware of it. So they're at the top here of the first sheet of paper, well, this side of your notes. Okay, you probably already know some means to add. To add, to increase, all of those words. Add means add. Some means add. Increase and add, it means add, more than means add, that's really obvious. The rest of them are less obvious, that the word difference means subtract. And you're going to see that a lot, and hopefully we'll eventually know what to do. When you see the difference of something, you'll know that two things in math are being subtracted. Same thing for less, okay? Product, the word product means to multiply. So the product of two and three is six because two times three is six. And quotient means to divide. And there's a certain order you have to follow. So if we're saying quotient of three and four, what we're talking about is 3 divided by 4, and fraction is the way that we show division most of the time in algebra. Why? I don't know, but we do. Okay, so if I want to divide 12 by 3, that's the quotient of 12 and 3, which is 4, I hope. All right, and I tried to set this up. Um, so the sum of blah and blah means you're going to add the two together. The difference of, here order matters, just like order does in real life when you're subtracting. The difference the difference of three and four. Well, that's supposed to be a 4. Okay, the difference of 3 and 4. That's going to be 3 minus 4. The difference of 3 and 4 is negative 1. The difference of 4 and 3 is 4 minus 3. So you have to decide, well, in, uh, whatever the order is of the numbers that are mentioned, that's what it's going to be. And if life was only easy, that's all we would have to deal with. You know, okay, so you follow the order of the numbers that are stated. The sum of 3 and 4 would be 3 plus 4. The difference of 3 and 4 would be 3 minus 4. The product of 3 and 4 would be 3 times 4. And the quotient of 3 and 4 would be 3 divided by 4. And life could actually be that easy, which would be really nice. But there are some problems, which is what keeps life interesting. Actually, I wouldn't mind not having Supposed to say things like, well, they build, oh, there aren't problems anymore. I completely forgot there are not problems anymore. Nobody has problems anymore. We have challenges. Is that stupid? All right, well, whatever, whatever. All right. The, here. The difference of 3 and 4. Let's go back to this for a minute. There's a reason. Is 3 minus 4.
subtracted from 4 is something entirely different. Well, almost. I mean, you've got the number 3 in the beginning, and you've got the number 4 at the end, and it just feels right to say, well, that's another way to say 3 minus 4, because obviously subtract means minus, but it doesn't. The whole from thing ruins everything for you. 3 subtracted from 4 turns the whole thing around and gives you 4 minus 3, which is 1. 3 subtracted from 4. So you have to watch out for little words like from. They're not our friend. Four letters starts with an F. You know it's not your friend. Well, maybe. Okay, and there are some other things too. But they'll become obvious, because I can't think of them right offhand. But there's another really important, well, there are a couple of really important words. One you can already figure out, one you already know. The word is, if any of you have studied history, or if you're old enough like me to remember when Bill Clinton went on the news when he was president and said, well, it all depends on how is is defined. And that was considered one of the more funny things that newscasters still talk about. Um, he, he was talking about Miss Lewinsky, I guess. And uh, anyway, I'm talking about math. So they, they're kind of different, maybe. The word is is really easy to, under, uh, to, to define. It's really easy to define. If you're in mathematics, it may not be so easy to define if you're a lawyer. All right, is means only one thing in math. Equals. Okay? So if something is something, hey, they're equal, and that's really obvious. So that's one of the obvious words. There are some unobvious words, like up. Of, unfortunately, in math has different meanings in different contexts. as you'll discover. But with the problems that we do in chapter two, most of the time, well, most of the time, whenever you're dealing with a percent problem, okay, whenever you're dealing with percents, the word of means multiply. Now, a lot of this is review of pre-algebra, and you may already remember it. Um, so for those of you who are thinking, this is really boring, I know all this stuff, I promise it'll get more involved. Notice I didn't say harder. Incidentally, I sent personal messages to everybody in the class yesterday. Some of you, if you've checked your email, you got my personal message. Most of them were very, very positive. Okay? Gosh, I love you guys. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. Um, all right. Remember percent? If you took pre-algebra here, you went in depth into what percent is. Um, if you studied it somewhere else, you also went in depth into what percent is. Five percent, the per, okay, and cent. Five, me, this slash right here, well, actually, let me, you know, if I were to do it neatly, the correct way to write five percent very carefully and very neatly is that way. 
we get this little thing right there because people are sloppy. I am sloppy. But really and truly, if you want to say 5%, that's really the correct way to do it. And if you're typing, that's the symbol that you get in Excel. It's the symbol you get in Word. These aren't really connected. That has a particular meaning, 5%. What it means is five per centum. Oh, well, I wrote centum. OK. And centum means 100. So five per 100. This slash is the division sign per. These two zeros are the zeros that go on 100. Whenever you see a percent, you're talking about, or whoever wrote it is talking about, that many out of 100. Now, one of the things you're going to be asked to do in Chapter 2, and actually through all of your math courses, whatever they are, whether you're going to AAS math or whether you're going to intermediate algebra after this, um, you're going to be asked all the time to translate a percent into a decimal. And you can memorize how to do it. Most of us have memorized how to do it. But the way around memorizing a lot of the time is to really understand why something is the way it is. Because if you understand it, then you don't have to memorize it because you understand it. So if I understand that this means 5 per 100, then all I have to do is take out my calculator and say 5 divided by 100. And I don't have to remember that 5% is really 0 0.05, because I understand it. So something you're going to be asked to do often, because, because we're always working percent problems, in real life especially you're always working percent problems, is how do, you, how do you change a percent into a decimal? Because if you're taking 25% of 12 eggs, say your boss wants you to do that for some odd reason, Maybe he's too lazy to do it himself, or she's too lazy to do it herself. If you're going to take 25% of 12 eggs, well, you know that in this context, of means times. But you're not going to say 25 times 12, because that would be 300. It would be a big number. I don't know. But I don't think your boss really wants 300 eggs. He might drop one, you know, and that would be a mess. So 25% is going to be 0.25. Even in real life, if you've got your little calculator, even the most simple calculator, most of the time, you've got to translate this to this, and the calculator doesn't do it for you most of the time. All right, so if your boss says, please find 25% of 12 eggs, for me, because I'm writing a letter, <coughs> uh, dictating a letter, then you would like pull out your little cheapy calculator. It doesn't have to be expensive. Say 0.25 times 12, and you'd go, oh, 25% of 12 is 3. Didn't you know that, you idiot? But of course, you wouldn't say that out loud, because then you would be on the unemployment line. Very rude, OK? Now, probably he wouldn't say, find me 25% of 12 eggs, but he might say, I need 25% of the 4,367 widgets that our factory built yesterday. I need for 25% of them to go to so-and-so. And if the regular person who does it is out of the office, then you're going to have to take 25% of that. So how would you do it? You would take your tr Nobody does it by hand anymore. You would take your trusty calculator. You would say 0. 0.25 times, and incidentally on the TI, and on, on most calculators now, 
the time sign looks like a little asterisk like that. 0.25 times 4, 3, 6, 7, and either equals or enter. Our calculator says enter, and you would come up with the answer and be considered totally brilliant. Indispensable. Unfireable. Fire the other guy who's not here today. Okay, so you want to be able to do that kind of translation. And it ends up being one of those things that you really, really do use in life. Something else you really need to remember because in algebra it's really important is what parentheses do. Okay, parentheses, unfortunately, do a whole bunch of different things and they all depend on context. Okay, if you've had the class before, if you had Algebra 1 in high school, um, you know that for instance, and when we get to Module 4, we're going to be talking about points, just like points located on the Earth, right? <clears throat> Latitude, longitude. Wherever you are, wherever we are, we're located at two numbers. Everywhere you're located consists of two numbers. Well, we're going to be graphing, and every point consists of two numbers. But the important thing right now is that we use parentheses to group them together so that you know, well, this is one point, part of its latitude, part of its longitude. Or part of its the x-coordinate, part of its the y-coordinate. You don't need to know that now, but we're going to be talking about it. Well, that's one thing that parentheses do that are very, very important. Parentheses group more often than they do anything else. So that if I have something like 3x plus 2, you know, we've already dealt with this. If I have, I, that's called an expression. I have this expression, 3x plus 2, and I want to take the whole thing and multiply it by 4. Then what I have to do is group it, group it together like that. I group it with parentheses, and then I multiply the whole thing by 4. So I distribute. All distribution is is multiplication. Okay, so 4 times 3 is 12. This is 12x plus 4 times 2 is 8. And so you did it. And parentheses were used for grouping. But parentheses are also used for multiplication. And so, I mean, it can be really hard to figure out what's going on. In this chapter, this chapter, in this module, we use parentheses to group a lot. And we also use parentheses to mean multiplication like that. And it's just something you get used to. As you go along, as you learn more, you just get used. You don't even think about the fact that sometimes parentheses are used for one thing, sometimes they're used for another thing. They're very interesting. Two times three is six, isn't it? How do you know to differentiate between the one that means multiply and the one that means group? Ha, ha, ha. Aha! Uh -huh. you, you get used to it. You get used to it. But I would say that I could, because there's only one, one number in each parentheses, it must mean multiplication. Because if there was more than one thing in there, then you'd be doing something else. And then again, there would be the whole problem set you're working on. So you would have hints. So, let's turn the sheet over.
and begin the excitement in life. You can look at that there. I, I don't. You can look at that there. I didn't mean it quite like that. No. You're going to have to look at your own sheet, and I am going to look up at Elmo. We're going to translate, and you do that a lot in math. With story problems, with word problems, you have to look at all these words, blah, 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 and then translate them into what it is the person who wrote it <clears throat> is trying to convey. And that's the hard part of word problems. Once you figure it out, you can set it up, you can solve the equation, whatever you're doing. But all those words can drive you crazy. Oh, they've already driven me crazy, but you probably know that. <clears throat> so the first problem we've got here, translate to an equation, then solve. So we're going to translate this to an equation. But none of these is really as easy as it sounds, I don't think. So the product of three, now, now, I went into math so I wouldn't have to deal with commas. OK, I went into math because I thought English was a pain. Um, however, here it's really important to have commas because this phrase that's set off with commas and a number increased by eight. That's grouping. All right, for the first time in my life, I saw that commas do, do the same thing as parentheses in mathematics. The product of three and the thing in parentheses. So you're going to say three times the thing in parentheses. I mean commas. I see parentheses, you see commas. They, they do kind of look like little commas. I mean parentheses. I mean whatever. All right. So we're going to multiply 3 by a number increased by 8. A number, what number? I, uh, well, I don't know what number yet because I haven't solved it yet. But whenever you're, you're hit with the words a number or the number, it means some number that you don't know. Therefore, you're going to call it x. Or in. You can call it in for number, or A or B or C. Doesn't matter. So a number increased by 8 is in plus 8. So the product of 3 and a number increased by 8 is negative 48. And now we're just going to solve this thing. Okay, so we have a distribution problem here. But you see, that was the hard part. This part is the last module. That part is this module, translating it into this form right here. That's the hard part of word problems. What is it? Yeah, is it? 3 times 8 is 24. So I have 3 and plus 24. This thing equals negative 48. So to get the 24 away from the 3 in, so I can isolate the 3 in, since the 24 is being added, I subtract it over. And then you can get out your trusty little calculator and say, well, gosh, I wonder what negative 48 minus 24 is, and that's the answer you get. Honest, really. And then to get in by itself, because you've got 3 in here, to get in by itself, since 3 is multiplied by n, you have to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. So you divide both sides by 3, and then if you don't have a calculator, you have to do it the old-fashioned way. Negative 24. And it's negative because you've got a negative divided by a positive, which, which is negative. Again, that's why calculators are superior, 
because they can they can remember all of those rules. They have those rules hardwired into them, whereas we have to try to remember, which can be really hard. And here you have that, don't you? A negative plus a negative is a bigger negative. A negative divided by a positive is still negative. All of those rules can drive you crazy very easily. But see, once you're here, if you worked the module for last week, you know how to deal with it once you get it written out mathematically. It's translating from words to math that is so hard. Until you learn the tricks. And the tricks all have to do with strategy. Next problem. So little. Four plus five times a number is seven times the number. So there we go again. What number? I don't know. So I call it a letter, because letters stand for numbers you don't know. Like the four, you know it's a four. And the five, you know it's a five. And the seven, you know it's a seven. But what the heck is the number? And a number, right? You don't know, so you call it a letter. And I don't want to get stuck on X's, so let's call it N. So N is a number. And something to remember is that a number is also the number means the same thing, the same exact number. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got four plus five times the number is, and they want you, right, they want to trick you. They want you to say four plus five times the number is seven without looking at the rest of it, it's not seven. Seven times the number. What number? The same number as in the beginning. So, now sometimes you have to read them four or five times. Four plus five times the number is, let's just deal with the stuff on the left of is. And then we'll deal with the stuff on the right of is, because is is equals, and that's always in the middle. All right, so let's just deal with this stuff the four plus, I can do that. I did it. Okay, four plus. Four plus what? Not four plus five, that would just be nine. It's got to be more complicated. Four plus five times the number is blah, blah. So, a number is n, and 5 times a number would be 5n. So this is all they're saying there on the left side of is. 4 plus 5 times a number is, and there are just too many words to say 7. So looking at this, 4 plus 5 times a number is, 7 times the number, it must be, Seven times n, right there. Same letter, same number. So in words now, four plus five times the number is seven times the number. What is the number? I don't know. I'm going to find out. OK, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a mixed equation. And if you can't look at it, see that, yes, the answer is two. Very good. Um, you kind of go step by step. And you've got to get your letter terms on one side of the equal sign, your number terms on the other side of the equal sign. 
Here I have constants are the pure numbers. Variable terms are terms that have letters and numbers, or just numbers, or just, no, or just letters. And this is a variable term. I've got to get these two guys together. I can only use that addition property of equality, or the opposite of it, which is subtraction. If I, since it's plus 5n, if I subtract 5n from both sides, like that, I know the secret of the universe, which is that 5 minus 5 is 0, which will leave me, if I've got 5 little n's and I take away those 5 n's, goodbye, there are no more n's. So I'll have a 4 over here. Over here, I do know that 7 minus 5 is 2. So if I have 7 little n's and I take away 5 of them, I'll have 2 left. And then to figure out what n is, well, 2 times n, I have to undo the 2 to get n by itself. And after all that, I have discovered that 4 divided by 2 is 2. So yes, the answer is 2. n equals 2. Does that work? 4 plus 5 times 2, does that equal 7 times 2? Yeah, 7 times 2 is 14. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 4 is 14. So yes, it does work. But you can't be certain. I like to OK. Right. So if we were in five relatively equal groups, what would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I can count. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Excellent. We could have five groups of five each, and I figured that out all by myself. So you pick the five people. Come on, you want to wake up. Life is exciting. <laughs> Who wants an eraser? Look at this. Don't say math sucks. 
actually going to say delicious. Oh, I'm sure she Only you and I know I'm facetious. <laughs> Okay, we're going to start off translating it. There you go. You're the boss. If you would give each person one of those. And, oh, I can't play favorites, can I? You're the boss. Oh, that's messed up. Give one to each person. I just didn't want them to come apart. And over here, who wants to be the boss? Oh, and then, uh, one one I just, yeah, yeah. There you go. Give one to each person. Just come up with a team there name and make it fun. Hi. Favorite foods. Go. Favorite foods. Favorite foods. Favorite foods. Okay, read oh. your problem. Everybody in the same group should have the same problem. And go ahead and meditate and discuss and put it up on the board and solve it. So it's two and in parentheses, um, X plus seven. Oh, that's not fun. Why don't you get a fatter marker? Do the pen. I'll see you on the unemployment line. Hey, hey, that's messed up. Oh, oh yeah. It's harsh. Is that the same problem? No. no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's the same problem. <laughs> Are we supposed to go ahead and write? Right. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Work it out. Okay. Have a consultation and try and decide how you're going to write it out. I think you need to tell them how to do it. Alright, so two friends. And like X, X uh, plus seven. Close the parentheses. Yeah. Two X plus fourteen equals negative three. What you Two X equals. Oh, well, I just like to do like about. Oh, I hate seeing. Yeah. Sorry about that with you all. And then negative four minus four. So that's gonna be two X equals negative four. Yeah. Oh, you're a mule. Fourteen. Yes. Twenty-two. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, twenty. No, yeah, you're subtracting. So you gotta get rid of 14 on one side. Oh, yeah. You're, uh, yeah, so. you're writing on the board with a pen. I made sure that I could. Wash okay. What we're gonna do later is we're gonna spit okay. in our hand and then wash it off. Thank you. Thank you. Cleans everything up. <laughs> Wait, okay, so. Yeah, subtract 14 from both sides, and so you'll get 2x oh, equals negative 50. It was washable. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, the X equals negative 45. Like the next Okay, let me see. So should be next. Shouldn't all right, very, very good. All right, the product of two and a number increased by seven is negative 36. Brilliantly done. Brilliantly done. What are you yelling at? Oh. Okay. 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 Okay.
Anyway, point being is that I want a tattoo of like a rose on my shoulder and then the vines come down. No fun fact about me. To me, I think that's just to get taken out by what's his name? Uh, Jessica. Jessica? Tony. Tony, I gotta remember that. Marvin. Hey, everybody, you did. Brandy. Alright. Erase your board and you're ready for another. Tanner. Sorry. Tanner, that's right. I know you told me once. Those aren't so washable after they got on dry waste. <laughs> 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 just do it just slowly. Spit in your hand. Spit in your hand. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to see if someone would actually do it. Uh-oh. One of Jeremy's words. Why do we have to have the wearing mark? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my yeah. God, I'm so much trouble. All right, but we'll worry about that later. Who wants to be the paper hander outer? Yeah, I'll do it. All right. No, there's like the one that Someone else can navigate us. I'm trying. Yeah, I'll take it. There you go. Yeah. That doesn't mean I have to erase that, do I? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, crap. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. 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 Yeah. 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 This is oh, Maker. Yeah. Hey, would you throw some markers over there? Okay, oh, I don't want to be awkward and just be like, hey, I want your markers. number is nine times the number and you subtract a six in and you've got three in and uh, yeah left for 12 and then you divide it by three to get in by itself and you got n equals four that's very good you can erase your number and sit down there. you are going out out thank you Oh, right. 
election, there were eight more Democrats than Republicans, with no parties, with no other parties represented. How many members of each party were there in the Senate? I don't know. Let's find out. Okay. After an election, there were, thank you, there were eight more Democrats, let's call them Dems, than, <laughs> than, than, than reps. <laughs> it's what we call the teacher getting lazy. Needing more Kathy. Okay, so there were eight more Democrats than Republicans. How many of each party, and no other parties, how many of each party were in the Senate? And so looking at this, I mean, you can do it in your head, but not all problems are doable in the head, so let's pretend this isn't. There were eight more Democrats than Republicans. In this particular Congress, how, how, which party had the most people? Democrats. The Democrats, right. So more Dems. Less 
less reps. But what do we know? We know that however many there are, if you add them together, you're going to get 100, right? Because there are only 100. Okay. So now, you read it again. There were eight more Democrats than Republicans. How many Republicans were there? We don't know. We don't know. If we knew, we would just add eight, and then we'd have the number of Democrats. But we don't know, and when you don't know, you saw a letter. Yeah. Or a question mark, or some kind of symbol. Oh, but we usually use letters. So, we don't know how many of these guys there were, but if we added eight to them, there'd be this number of guys. So let's call the number of Republicans X, going back to the basic, fa most famous letter. Let's just call the number of Republicans X, then we know that since the Democrats have eight more people than the Republicans, that that's going to be X plus eight. All right, so that the Democrats plus the Republicans equals 100. And now that was the very hardest part of the whole problem, putting it into words, I think. <coughs> because now all you have to do is solve this, and I'm going to put it together more neatly over here. There is your basic equation. Without having the basic equation right, it's pretty hard to get the rest of it right. So for, for word problems like this, usually you can get half credit just for writing that correctly, even if the rest of it is wrong, which is pretty good, because that's the very hardest part right there. On the left, you want to get your like terms together, the x and the x. That's 1x plus 1x. Well, there must be two of them, right? Two x's. Now I'm just using algebra. I've completely left behind um, what x meant. So a good idea whenever you're doing a story problem, whatever letter you decide to use, it's really a good idea to write that phrase right there. Let x equal, and then somehow let yourself remember what it is, because by the time you get to the end of the problem, you might not remember, because you've been so busy doing algebra. OK, so we've got 8 plus 2x equals 100. This is a constant term over here. 8 is constant, because it's, it's going to be 8 no matter what. It's 8 all by itself, no letter with it. So is that. That's 100 all by itself, no letter. So let's get them together. Since this is positive 8, I'll subtract 8, because 8 minus 8 is 0. But then there's that catch all the time that I, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I have to subtract 8 from over here, too. And that will give me 92. 92 equals 0 plus 2x. Bring down the 2x because it's not doing anything up there. Well, 0 plus 2x is just 2x. That's not a necessary step, but I did it anyway. Now I've got 2 times x equals 92. All I have to do is divide 92 by 2. Is that 46? Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. OK. So that's x equals 46. So that's great. But by now, most of the time, I've forgotten what x is. And my math lab usually has little boxes that says the number of Democrats were, the number of Republicans were, or the number was, whatever, whatever, tense, <laughs> English, ugh. no. OK. Anyway, so I have to look back at somehow having let myself remember which is which. Um, X, just all by itself, that's the number of Republicans. So that's going to be 46. Now, over here, since X is 46, I have to add 8 to it, right? And that gives me 54. So I know that for that particular Congress, whichever one it was, there were 54 Democrats and 46 Republicans probably sitting up there in Washington doing 
absolutely nothing, except our cue. It was terrible, wasn't it? I shouldn't say a thing like that. <laughs> you should be ashamed to tell I, the truth like that. I know. Hey, um, yeah, all right. You said it, I didn't. All right, let's, should we do an easy one? No, let's do a hard one. This is kind of, sort of hard. Kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of is one of my favorite words. Huh? Oh. It did, didn't it? What a good little phone. Math is more important than law. Besides, I know who's doing their work in my math lab and who's not. OK. And that really is all that matters. You know, are you in my math lab doing the work? Then you get counted as participating. The whole, the whole attendance thing has changed. And you'll get used to the idea. In some ways, it's even better because your teachers aren't going to have to take time taking role, but I will eventually because I want to learn who you are, and I won't learn it if I don't start doing it. But we got to talk about insecticide, and we've got time because nobody likes bugs, all right? And insecticide contains 67 centigrams of inert ingredients. Inert means doesn't do anything, it just takes up space. Okay. So there's an insecticide. How can I how can I draw a bug? A dead bug. <laughs> That's my version of a dead bug. Okay? So we've got this insecticide, and it's got a 67, in a particular sample of it, there are 67 centigrams. I don't, I'm just going to say CG. That, anybody know? Any of you medical people know what the correct uh, abbreviation is for centigram? I think that is correct. Let's declare it correct. <laughs> All right, it's correct. I like it. Thank you very much. <laughs> and one centigram of active ingredient. Okay, now this is the inert. Don't do nothing. And this is the active, and the reason the inert is there is to not make that so strong that it kills humans as well as bugs. You can spread it around and it'll kill a whole bunch of bugs. Okay, so in a particular sample, samps, no, sample, that's how much you've got. All right, now it says, if a quantity of insecticide weighs 408 grams, how much of it is inert and how much of it is active? Whoa. Wow. All right, so here's another category. You've got another sample, and that one weighs 408? Yes. 408 centigrams, and they want to know how much of this and how much of this. The 408, you said grams. Yeah, that was just grams. Did I say, I should have said centigrams. Yes, yeah, centigrams, my bad, centigrams. All right, so here we're talking about gross weight. Here we're talking about individual weights. I think we should add these two together and get a gross weight up there too. Because if you've got the 67 inert and the one active, all together you've got how much? 68, yeah. So you've got 68 grams. Uh, centigrams. Keep me honest. Centigrams. So you'll have 68 centigrams of this and 408 centigrams of this, and we're just kind of wondering how this breaks down. 
you know what this reminds me of? And those of you coming straight from pre-algebra might have a vague memory itching at the back of your head. I think it's going to be a proportion problem. And I think we can solve it with proportions. Because for this sample, one out of 68 centigrams is going to be the active, the active part of the sample. And down here, since I have no earthly idea at all how much of the active ingredient is in there, I can set these equal because we assume that they're made by the same manufacturer and they're exactly the same kind of insecticide. Okay, so if they are, then these proportions will be true. If you have a little bit, 67 centigrams will be inert and one will be active. If you have a big sample, you're still going to have the same proportion. Yes, ma'am? It's 408. 408. 48, yes. Okay, getting carried away. Four away. Thank you. There you go. Okay, so now, does that look honest? Does that look right? Okay, does it make sense? Well, let me remind you how to solve a proportion. There's an easier way and a harder way because nobody likes fractions, right? Really, nobody likes fractions. But whenever you've got one fraction equals one fraction and there's an x in it, so you've got to solve it. See the equal sign? That means it's an equation. There's a real quick and easy way to, easier way to solve it, and that's cross multiply. Like that. Remember? Remember cross multiplying, multiplying along the diagonals of the x. So we can say 68 times x 68 times, equals 1 times 408. That's 408. And then we can divide both sides by 68 to get the x by itself. Thank you. The woman did that in her hand. Actually, I did it on the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> with a little bit of help from the calculator. So what does that mean? That means assuming this is the same exact kind of insecticide, then for a bigger, a bigger weight of it, that'll be six centigrams. Six centigrams CGs will be active in this bigger group. So how much does that leave to be inactive if 6 centigrams of the 408 are active? 408 minus 6. There you go. There you go. So that's how you do those. Um, because story problems tend to, story problems, word problems tend to be hard for almost everybody, um, I did something I don't usually do, and I made a how-to video that covers each one of the homework problems. And my math lab changes the numbers, but they're still the same kind of problem. So if you were to go home and do the uh, module two homework, the videos, if you do it with Chrome, the videos are there to help you. I'll take roll next time and get to know you, and don't tell anybody I let you out five minutes early. No, we're Tell him that. Huh? What? Huh? You can't be worse than my biology teacher. She let us go early. Oh, do what?